when I introduced the graphs of the sine and the cosine, I talked about their starting points. If we think of X as time, then these curves look the same. They're both wave shapes, but initially, at time zero, the sine curve is here, whereas at time zero, the cosine is up there. We also introduced the idea that the sine is periodic and the cosine, but we'll look at the sine at the moment. That is to say that the graph of the sign is the same shape, this shape, repeated over and over again, both in the positive and in the negative direction. And the amount of time it takes to trace this shape out once was called the period of the curve. In this case, the period of the sine function. And we'll now look at the sine of b times x. And what we're going to find is that it's going to change the period. That is to say, this capital B will control the period of the sine function. Here's the sine of Bx. Currently, B is 1. And if we let B increase, that's decreasing the period. The period is the distance between this point and that point. And when B increases, you see that distance shrinks. Conversely, if I let B be less than one, it's increasing the period. Notice that I'm not changing this starting value. So as B changes, the period decreases or increases, but where all B is here at X equals zero. The cosine, similarly, Here's the cosine, and if I increase B, the period shrinks. The period is the distance from here to here for the cosine, and as B increases, we see that there we go, that distance is decreasing. Conversely, if I let B shrink, the period increases. But just as with the sign, notice that this initial value isn't changing as the period shrinks. 
sort of the period grows, where always passing through this point, zero, one. And for both the sine and the cosine, the period is given by the same formula. The period of the sine of Bx or the cosine of Bx is 2 pi divided by B. Yeah. 